This is my ultra small, ultra light gaming mouse that I built from scratch. But why? Well, to see how small and how light I could go with it. And the answer is 18 cubic centimeters in volume and less than 10 grams. But there's a bit more to it than that. Let's first discuss how a mouse works. Back when my dad was young and dinosaurs roamed the land, mice used to have balls. These balls would run against two encoders that were offset by 90 degrees from each other. This would give the cursor an X and Y movement. As technology advanced and the dinosaurs died out, mice lost their balls in favor of optical sensors. These sensors work somewhat like a camera where there is a small image sensor taking lots of pictures continuously and then tracking the changes in the images from one to the next. For this project, the sensor I opted for was a Pixar PMW3389 because it's one of the best on the market and I could get it from Tindy rather than needing to be a licensed manufacturer with Pixar. This sensor came with source code designed to be run on Arduino. So like any good programmer, their code became my code and voila, the programming's done. Well, basically done. I actually had to take the sensor data and output that as a cursor movement to the computer as well as add a left and right click. But if you care about the code, you can go check it out on the Hackaday project that I will be posting for this whole thing. All of the source code will be there, all the other 3D files, schematics, and everything, and then maybe my code can become your code. The key here was to design this around a microprocessor that could actually talk to the computer and emulate a mouse. Not all of them can. The easiest one to get this code working with was the Atmega 32U4, so that's what I went with. I designed my own PCB around this chip to make sure it was as small and compact as possible with absolutely nothing extraneous on board. Thanks to PCBWay who sponsored this project, I had these beautiful 0.6 millimeter thick PCBs in hand at no time at all. Their service is easy to use and they've got a very quick turnaround time. Be sure to go check them out. I opted for 0603 size SMD components. They are incredibly tiny but with steady hands can still be worked with. If you drop one of these, however, they disappear straight through into the back rooms. I'm pretty sure there's mountains of these components back there. Next step was to solder the SMD components to the PCB, which if you want to learn how to do, there's tons of great YouTube videos out there showing how to properly do this. I watched none of these. Stuck the PCB to an old heatsink I had laying around, aligned the solder mask, and squeegeed on the solder paste using a CPU that was in the line of sight at the wrong time. And lo and behold, it worked perfectly. Luckily for me, the sensor uses the Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI, to communicate with the microprocessor. And this is also the exact same pinout needed to flash the bootloader onto the microprocessor so that I am able to program it via USB like any off-the-shelf Arduino. Well, it's almost the same pinout. I realized at this point that I forgot to add a breakout for the microprocessor's reset pin, which is critical when trying to flash the bootloader. But with a bit of delicate soldering, I was able to temporarily add this rather cursed looking lead coming directly off of the chip's reset pin, allowing me to flash the bootloader. The files I've published do include a breakout for the reset pin, so you won't run into this issue. With the bootloader flashed, I could now solder on the micro switches. For these, I opted for some genuine gaming Kale GM 8.0s. Why these specific ones? Well, they are great switches for a gaming mouse, and they're available on Amazon. Thank you, Supreme Overlord Bezos. Since mice lost their balls, they now need skirts. So I 3D printed this one here to keep the sensor's lens off of direct contact with the desk, as well as to act as a skate for smoother movement. Along with this, I 3D printed this cute little shell to slide over the PCB like this. It makes it a bit easier to hold and use. And I printed it out of red to gain some extra performance. And it's all done, and it seems to work great. But how well does it game? To start, we're gonna test the mouse that I built playing some Valorant, we're just in the firing range, and we're gonna give it a go and see how well I do. Oh gosh. 
apparently not very well. So I'm missing all of my shots, but I don't know if that's because I'm bad or if it's the mouse's fault. So what we'll do next is we are going to test it in comparison to this glorious Model O mouse that I have. Um, as far as this one goes, playing with it, I mean, it's tracking well. It, I'm able to aim. I'm just not very good at this game, I guess. All right, let's give this mouse a go. Now, I have had to adjust the sensitivity a bit um, because with the mouse I built, you have to adjust the sensitivity by updating a registry value for the uh, sensor. With that, though, um, for some reason, it would not let me update it. I could write a new registry value. I could see that the new registry value was written to the sensor's registry, but it uh, would not do anything. It wouldn't affect the, uh, the DPI of the mouse. So I'm having to change the in-game sensitivity here to two. Uh, I think I'm doing marginally better with this mouse. Yeah, I got a score of one versus zero. So <laughs> that's an improvement. <laughs> For a bit more quantifiable data, rather than a zero versus one score. I've got aim labs loaded up with a um, accuracy test and we'll see how this goes. Uh, gotta go quick, quickly. Trying not to miss. I'm obviously not the most skilled FPS gamer out there. Uh, Oh, no, no, no. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, let's see here. All right, we got a 1700 score, 66% accuracy, 62 targets killed. Let's try again with the other mouse. Something else with this mouse, it is so light that you feel the entire weight of the USB cable rather than any of the mouse's weight. Um, you let go of this and it, the cable just pulls it around. If your cable is like crooked or something, it will lift the mouse off the desk if you let it go. Like there's no weight holding that cable in place while using this mouse. Okay, I don't think this is going any better than yeah, okay, let's see. Oh, I got a negative 4,294 score this time. 55% uh, accuracy, 38 targets killed. So definitely significantly worse. All right, for one last test, we'll try to do some productivity tasks. And for that, I've got a Bob Ross painting that we're gonna try and recreate in MS Paint here. So let's get started. Let's start with the uh, mountains here in the background. Uh, we'll just go up like that and come down. Uh, there's another little peak there before it disappears kind of off like that. Um, let's see, I wanna change, change colors. Nope, that's not it. Um, that's okay, we'll do it all in black and white. Um, Bring it a nice tree up there. Yep, just like that. Beautiful. And we'll give it some some branches. Um, we've got a, a river coming down this way, just like so. Uh, and then it comes kind of like that and back that way. There we go. Um, oh, there's another little mountain peak just in front there. We've got more trees on that this side. Going up like that. Uh, we'll add a couple more of these guys in here. Just even clicking this mouse sends the cursor all over the place. So this is, it adds, adds some texture to artwork like this, you know? So it's, it's quite handy. Uh, let's, let's add another little tree in here. Give him, give him a little friend. There we go. Look at that. That's that's all coming together beautifully. Um, that should kind of come along that way. All right. All right. That's looking pretty good. I think Bob Ross would be pretty proud. 
Um, overall, I probably wouldn't recommend it for doing any sort of uh, graphic design like this. But as you can see, it works, it's working well. It's a mouse. Well, there it is, the ultra tiny mouse that I built from scratch. Is it better for gaming? Not really. Productivity? Probably not. Is it cool to show off? Absolutely.